Hey guys, I'm back with another video. If you're new, like and subscribe. Last video, we read Chapter 2 of The Stone, My Dad's Book by Justin Emmons. This video, we're reading Chapter 3. The very next morning before the sun, the sun came up, Bidley woke Trevor and said, We must go! Before they left, Trevor left a note for his mother, saying he loved her and he would be back as soon as possible. With that simple note explaining nothing, they were off. Bidley is walking crazy, just wrote, Such a little guy. Trevor thought to himself. As he watched a little creature pulling away from him on the trail, as they came to the clearing, Trevor wondered if there would be anyone waiting on the other side of the portal. He wasn't scared, more worried, but still excited for the adventure. Bidley told Trevor to step back and he would open the gate. As he stood there, waiting patiently, Bidley started shaking and chanting, Morphus! Oh, Morphus! All of a sudden, the portal opened, and as they stepped into the other world, Bidley stuffed the trail deep in the thick sack so Dumbus, Dormbus couldn't hear it or see it. As they started on their way, Trevor was amazed at the sights around them. Everything just seemed so alive and so beautiful, even though... Even the thorn trees along the path were extraordinary. While Trevor's natural instinct was to chop them out of the way, all Bidley would do was say, Excuse me, and they would open. Bidley was so f walk was walking so fast that Trevor had to almost jog to keep up. And in the moment, his orange friend had trotted so far ahead, he was almost out of sight. Suddenly, out of nowhere, something grabbed Trevor or knocked him down and knocked him down. He didn't even see what it was and scrambled up to a seat, only for an invisible f force to knock him down again. This time, he couldn't move. No matter how hard he tried, his body was held to the dirt by some invisible force. He screamed for Bidley, trying to thrash the free but Bidley wasn't there having already turned the bend up ahead out of sight as Trevor lay there unable to move he fearfully thought to himself I'm fixing to die then Trevor suddenly lost his breath as everything went dim he thought he would saw an uh, image of a beautiful woman saying, Don't give up, Trevor. You can get up. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. When he came to, he thought only moments later, he began looking around for what had happened him. And out of the corner of his eyes, he saw a little creature with two legs who was pretty much all neck and one big guy. As he squinted at it, trying to determine if it was seeing if he was saying things, he heard the beautiful voice again. Take the stick, Trevor, and jab it in the eye. Take the stick and jab it in the eye. So Trevor looked at the stick the voice mentioned and spotting it near his right hand just as he was about to unconscious again. He gathered every bit of strength he could muster, grabbed the stick, and jabbed the, the creature in the eye. It let out a scream that would shattered glass. Bidley must have heard a man running back to where Trevor was. It seemed that when he wanted to Bidley, could run as fast as a cheetah, he came out of nowhere, hit the creature, and knocked it out 30 feet away, just like a pro football player. Bigley grabbed Trevor and began to run, explaining as they sped away that when he heard the scream, he knew it was insist what it was, one of the Dormus's little scouts. He kept them searching all over to let him know if anyone was against him. 
they were his million spots watching. Trevor had never run at such speed before, and he watched the forest race past him in amazement. Then suddenly Trevor heard the awful sound again, and as the ground began to shake, Bidley cut away from the trail and began by a huge rock. As they sat there, Bidley disappeared. He grabbed Trevor's hand and Trevor disappeared as well. The ground shook even more as a roaring that sounded almost like a lion, but twice as loud. Toward the air, Trevor's heart was beating so hard he was afraid the beast would hear it. It got closer, and as it drew near to their hiding place, it seemed as a big as two elephants. He looked like an ox, but it looked like an ox, except it had four horns, two above its head that wrapped around it ears like a ram and two that came out of where its nose should be and it did it ever looked so mean surrounding the massive beast as it barreled along the path where what looked like very large rats with no hair what is this world what are these creatures my mom will never believe me if i even made it back to her Trevor thought as the beast and its rats reached their spiding hiding spot and slowed down and started looking around Bidley and Trevor. He couldn't breathe. As he started gasp for breath, Bidley but his put his little hand in Trevor's mouth while the massive beast stood over them. Its breath smelled of death. Just then he heard a crack and the beast jerked up a little as the rats like minions said move they're down there as they run away a voice behind trevor and bedley said hurry come with me you must hurry the voice whistled and suddenly dog-like creatures appeared springing out of the treetops and bushes trevor was astonished and could not believe his eyes but when but with the offer of help offer of help they followed one of the creatures which looked as if it were a dog that walked on its hind legs resplendent a a spring husky with human hands and human feet the creature turned and said my name is phoenix and led the dummy the tumpies we were going to go ahead and do us and his ways. We were just waiting until the trail shows back up. Trevor said, we have it, said Billy, smacked him in the back of the head. Phoenix said in surprise, you have it? You have it? We will be at your command. Can I see it? No, Billy replied, and he grasped the treadle and pressed it deeper into his pocket. Trevor asked, why not? Bentley hissed in a whisper, because we don't even know these dumpies. As far as we know, they could work for him. Just then, Phoenix's face started turning different colors. Work for him, you said? Work for him? That beast destroyed everything. I love my entire family. I love I gathered everyone you see here over time and hid us all so I can get revenge and I will without you or without you. Trevor felt bad and Phoenix said, Well, Bidley, and I are on our way. I are on our way to his village to find out how to destroy Dornbus. You will stay at our camp tonight, and the, in the morning, I will send two of my best warriors to help you with your journey, Phoenix replied. Then he turned and said, let's move. The Dormbus, the Dumbies, began bouncing 
out of the trees and all over the place. So Trevor and Bodley began to follow them. After a while, they came to a great wall where Phoenix is whistled again. <laughs> and the wall began to open, revealing a small city and trees. That night, they held a delicious meal of meat and plants that Trevor had never tasted before but enjoyed endlessly. As he slept that night, he dreamed of a beautiful woman he had said earlier. Who was she? Why did she help me? Trevor wondered. Again, the very next morning, they set out for Bidley's village. The two dumpies that were going to Nick, to his neck to look up, up, up at him, at them. Even though Trevor himself was at least five feet seven inches tall, these things are huge. Trevor thought to himself, there was a black one called darkness, darkness, and a gray one called fear. As they left, Phoenix said, when you arrive and get your directions sent, fear back to unite with us to take down the beast. They traveled on animals that were like horses, but with eagle heads. They were so fast, everything in this world was like nothing Trevor had ever seen before. The group stayed away from the trails because Dormbus had grown so powerful that he controlled just about any everything village that was out there and everyone and everything was in fear there would die if they would die if they betrayed him betrayed betrayed betray him so they would let tell Dormbus if Bentley or any of the others attempted to come through but fear and Dorcas knew all of the back ways. But as they traveled, Trevor wondered what Billy Bigley's village would be like. After everything he had seen so far in this world, he couldn't imagine what would come next. What does a village of green and orange creatures look like in a world of talking, walking dogs, disappearing women, creatures with horse bodies and eagle heads, Trevor wondered. They overcame many obstacles on their journey to Bidley's village. Finally, after many close calls, the little group arrived, and it was like nothing like Trevor had imagined. When they crossed over the great mountain, there was a valley below, and the walls made from stone as high as skyscrapers were homes carved into mountain into the mountain. As they traveled down the valley, Trevor could see Bidley's eyes light up. He was a bone. Finally, after so long, he was home. After, finally, after so long, his happiness was short-lived, though, because they soon discovered it was as if no one lived there anymore. As they reached each of the wonderfully carved homes, they would soon ever they would soon realize everyone had left or been taken as if life had been going on as usual then they had then had just stopped as they were just about to give up hope Bisley heard something call for him in a small voice hey you hey you are you a grandmaster's son Bidley turned and said Yes, she's speaking. Out of the corner of the room, a small creature walking up upright and carrying a staff said, It is I. Who are you, Bigley said. I am Ace. Your father left me here to wait for you. No, I never imagined it would take so long. What happened to my father, Bigley asked, his voice full of concern. Not to worry. The creature said he doesn't, he wasn't destroyed. He didn't let Dwindus know he, who he was. He blended in. 
Dormus thinks the Grandmaster is who the, has the true. Well, well, what are you supposed to tell me? Bidley asked Ace. That was all for today. I hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe. Bye.